welcome to my short session on what Microsoft Teams can do, specifically for you. I'm Shelley Fischel and I want to answer some of the questions that I see popping up online about what Teams is and how it can be used. So before I st get stuck into that, a little bit about me. I've got over 20 years experience as an IT trainer in the classroom and several years experience online. I founded Tomorrow's VA, an online training company, and you can find lots of my courses at www.tomorrowsva.com, but more on that later. I am CEDAL and COLF certified, which means I'm a certified online learning facilitator and a certified designer of online learning, and I'm a fellow of the Learning and Performance Institute with which both those qualifications were taken. And I have a podcast called Virtually Amazing. Check it out on the channel. So what is Microsoft Teams? Well, it is a hub for teamwork in Office 365. That's what Microsoft calls it. It enables a team to chat with other members, to collaborate on documents, to have online meetings and share screens and slides and all of those things. I can access my OneDrive files from Teams and I can add other applications to enable collaboration. A team is made up of channels and channels can be project or department specific and one team can have many channels. So let's think about this. We have our Teams application and maybe we have a design project and an arranging the Christmas party project. And maybe there's a conference we need to arrange too. And perhaps we need to look after travel. Each of those could be a team all by itself. So the design project could be the design project team. The members of that team will be all the people who work in the design department. And within the design project, you might have different channels, one for images, one for design elements, or whatever it is that goes with a design project. Similarly, arranging the Christmas party that might have a channel for venues, a channel for uh, menus, whatever, however you want it to, do, to, to work out. And same for a conference or for travel. However, it's possible that all of those are channels within one team. And there's no right or wrong answer to this. It's how it's going to work for your organisation. So who exactly can join a team? Well, anyone in your organisation can be a member and you can invite them in. So anybody who has the same company email address that you have. So I am Shelley at tomorrowsva.com and my alter ego Veronica the Frog is Veronica at tomorrowsva.com and we can both be a member of any team so long as we're invited. So what about people not in your organisation? Well, you can invite them as guest members. When you invite an external person into a team, they can do just about anything that a fully fledged member of your organization can do. And that means they can collaborate on documents and have online meetings with all of you. It's a place to chat and keep track of the discussion. So each channel will have a discussion place, a posts area. This means that you can keep a lot of the comms inside Teams and out of Outlook. You can have online meetings. Here is a Excel training session I ran recently using Teams. You can chat with everyone in the channel, as I just mentioned, and that's what the channel chat looks like. We also have private chat, where you can initiate a chat with just one person or even a few people. And this means that it doesn't need the attention of everybody in the channel, just the person that you want to talk to. And you can pop those chats out now and keep them in separate windows. If you're having a chat with somebody and you want to do more than just type, you can turn it into a virtual online meeting by clicking the camera button to have a video meeting or the phone button to have a call. And the share screen button, the third one there, will allow you to share your screen with the other person too. You can schedule a meeting in Teams, and this is something that comes up a lot. What if I want to just have a meeting with external users? I don't want them to be members of my team, but I just need them to be part of that status meeting or something or other. So I go to my calendar in Teams, which by the way connects you to your Outlook calendar, and I click the new meeting button, 
address and schedule the meeting as usual, and then click send. Once I send it, the join meeting, um, the join Microsoft Teams meeting link appears, and I can join from that meeting or indeed in Teams from the join button. My guests can join on the web. I can also schedule a meeting via Outlook. In my Outlook calendar, at the top, there is a new Teams meeting button. It appears on your home ribbon, for the calendar that is. And then I click and create and schedule that meeting just as I would schedule any other meeting. And you'll see that when you create a new Teams meeting, it puts all the joining instructions in the body of the meeting invite, just as you would expect. And if you start to create a meeting and you forgot to turn it into a Teams meeting, every calendar invite will have a, a Teams meeting icon. Clicking the icon will put the join instructions in. When you are in an online meeting, the host will have meeting controls like this. In fact, everyone has meeting controls. Currently, at the date I record this, which is towards the end of May in 2020, those meeting controls will hover at the bottom of the screen. By the end of June 2020, the meeting experience is going to change slightly and those meeting controls will go to the top of the screen. And I can't wait for that, it will make it much easier. And you'll see that there are lots of things you can do when you're in a meeting. You can see how long you've been there. You can turn your microphone and your camera on or off. You can share your screen and present. More controls and settings gives you lots more things that you can do, like add a custom background or blur your background or record the meeting. There is meeting chat, which keeps all the chat to do with the meeting in one place. And you can also see your participants and hang up or leave the meeting. If you hang up and leave the meeting, you're just leaving the room effectively and the rest of the people will stay with the meeting going on. If you're the host and you want to end the meeting, you'll do that from the three dots and there's an option to end the meeting for all. When you share your screen, this is what it looks like. So I'm on the left hand side here sharing my screen where I get to choose. It will show you the most recently opened PowerPoint presentations because most of the time it's PowerPoint you're going to want to share. But if you want to share something that's on your screen or a document, make sure you have it open first and then you can scroll through this list and find it. And on the right, you can see what presenting a slide deck looks like from my perspective as the presenter. There I am down in the bottom right hand corner and there are my slides in the middle. So what collaboration methods are there within Teams? Well, we've just seen there's chat and meetings. There's also the ability to share files and work together on those files. So each channel will also have a files section. And in that section, anybody who is a member of that team will have access to anything stored here because that files section is a mini SharePoint site and that's where your team's documents are stored. So we can get to anything within here. The image you can see is from the team that I use to manage my virtually amazing podcast with my colleague Joe, who is not at Tomorrow's VA. And both of us have access to all of these files and folders, can upload and download as we wish, and it just keeps everything nice and streamlined. We can work on documents inside Teams. So here's one of those documents to do with the podcast, open on the screen, and you'll see that you have a word editing toolbar pop up the ribbon just as you would in, if you were working on it outside. You can add tabs to your teams, to your channels, to make your work better. So tabs are a way of adding extra apps. For example, a link to a particular website that you want everyone to go to. It could be a form to gather feedback or perhaps to collaborate on the design of a form using Microsoft Forms. Or you could add a whiteboard and there are loads and loads of third party apps that you can add to Teams. So in summary, Teams is essentially a collaboration hub. You can chat with other members of your team. You can collaborate on documents. You can have online meetings and share your screen. You can access your OneDrive files and folders and you can add other apps. You can, as I said earlier, invite guest members to your team. 
and they have the same capabilities almost completely as the members of your team itself. And I should mention here that there are certain settings that you will need to have switched on if you want to work with guest users, but that's subject for another day. If you want to know more about how you can use Microsoft Teams in your business, then I have exactly the right course for you. I have a course called How to Use Microsoft Teams and the link to it is in the description of the video. It sits on my learning platform and it will take you through the setup of Teams, what you need to do to enable guest users, how to use it, how to chat, how to manage online meeting, everything that I've mentioned in this introductory video is in that course and as I said there's a link in the description of the video so I hope to see you on the course but if not thank you for watching and I hope this has helped you learn and understand what Microsoft Teams can do for you.